Welcome to an introduction to managerial accounting, brought to you by Park Bench Tutors and narrated by David Hopcroft. For more information about Park Bench Tutors, please visit parkbenchtutors.com. In this podcast, we will introduce the idea of standard costs and show how variances are calculated. We will also look at how the information from such analyses may be used by a business. Standard costs are those incurred in the production of a good or the provision of a service under the expected conditions. Use of the term expected conditions means that the budgeted costs do not take into account any exceptional changes in circumstances that might occur. Standard costs are based on unit costs, so for a good that is produced they refer to direct material, direct labour and manufacturing overhead. For example, tropical tents produce a tent for use in tropical conditions. They have costs per tent for direct materials of $74, direct labour $64 and manufacturing overhead of $36. The standard costs per tent are therefore $174. These costs can be broken down and expressed in another way and this is one of the steps that may be taken to develop standard costs. Note that materials are now broken down to the canvas used and the carbon fibre used, and the cost is expressed together with the standard quantity that would be required to produce each tent. The direct labour is expressed not just in dollar value, but also in terms of hours. The total will still be $174 per tent. Using these standard costs we can draw up budgets for the production of a particular quantity of our good. If we expect to produce a thousand tents, then we expect the canvas used to cost $60,000, the carbon fibre $14,000 and so on. Where do our costs come from? Standard costs can be developed from analysis of previous production records. In this example, we have shown the production records for direct labour for the previous year. The total hours and the total of tents produced are shown. This gives a figure of around 4 hours direct labour per tent and a direct labour cost of around $64. Managers are aware there is a distinction between ideal standards and attainable standards and will need to determine which to use. Ideal standards are those which assume there will be no change in circumstances and can include costs based on no strike action or labour disruption, no breakdown of equipment and no problems with supply of raw materials. While such standards are believed to motivate, the downside is that they are unlikely to be reached. For this reason, most managers prefer to set out attainable standards. These assume it is possible for circumstances to change, and there will be allowances for time lost for maintenance and machine breakdown. The difference between the standard cost and the actual cost represents the standard cost variance. Variance analysis is the comparison between these costs. Let us work through an example to show the use of the terms and how the analysis is made. Quick shape makes bins used for garbage. They are heavy duty plastic bins and the quantity of material used, amount of labour required and overhead are shown, so that the standard cost for a bin is $39.50. The actual cost of materials will be the actual quantity purchased multiplied by the actual price paid. To compare this we need to look at the actual quantity at a standard price which would be the actual quantity purchased multiplied by the standard price. We can also compare with the standard costs, which would be the standard quantity of material used multiplied by the standard price. These are the calculations that we use for materials variances. Let us look at figures for the production of 200 bins. The standard cost indicates this would take 1,100 kilos of materials which would cost $5,500. The actual amount used was 980 kilos to purchase for $4,802. Consider the material price variance. This is the actual price less the standard price 
then multiplied by the actual quantity used. This gives a figure of negative $98. A negative figure indicates a favorable result since it reflects that the actual price was less than the standard price. Now the material quantity variance. This will be the actual quantity used less the standard quantity multiplied by the standard price. The result is a negative $600. This is also favorable since the actual quantity used was less than the standard quantity. Now we take a look at the labor figures. The standard cost would have been 100 hours at a cost of $1400. The actual time was 96 hours at a cost of $1440. To make comparisons here we use actual labor cost which refers to the actual hours worked multiplied by the actual rate paid. The actual quantity at the standard rate will be the actual hours worked multiplied by the standard rate. Finally the standard labor cost will be standard hours multiplied by the standard rate. The labor rate variance will be the actual rate less the standard rate multiplied by the actual hours. In this case the result is positive at $96. This is regarded as unfavorable since the actual rate was above the standard rate. The labor efficiency variance is calculated by actual hours less standard hours multiplied by the standard rate. This is calculated as negative $56. This is regarded as favorable since actual hours worked are less than the standard hours. Overhead variances are also calculated. Here we must remember that a standard rate of overhead can be determined from previous production and budgeted production. However, we must also remember that the overhead is made up of fixed costs and variable costs. The fixed budget will remain the same regardless of the units produced but the variable part of overhead will alter according to the number of units produced. We call this a flexible budget. If the actual overhead was $1,020 but the flexible budget is $1,040 then the difference, negative $20, is considered favorable. Actual costs for overhead are less than expected costs. If the flexible budget level is then compared to the standard budget, then the result is seen to be unfavorable. To determine a flexible budget, we separate costs for fixed overheads, such as rent, depreciation and any supervisor salaries, from the variable overhead that includes items such as energy used, indirect materials used and maintenance costs. The flexible budget is then a fixed overhead amount plus the amount per unit for variable overhead multiplied by the number of units produced. Care is needed in the interpretation of variance. Let us suppose that the standard cost for overhead for 500 units was $20,000 of fixed costs based on a unit cost. If only 400 units are produced then it might seem that fixed costs have been reduced but all this really says is that production was less than planned and this is the part that should be investigated. If the plant operates at above or below capacity then what is the effect on costs? For this we go back to the idea of incremental analysis. Let us assume that a good has a contribution margin of $150. If the anticipated production is 2,000 units and only 1,800 units are produced, then the loss in profit is the contribution margin multiplied by the number of units less than anticipated. In this case, a loss of $30,000 of incremental profit. If there is overproduction, say of 50 units, then we have a gain of $7,500 of incremental profit. Once a managerial accountant has the figures for variances, then care is needed in analysis. The best approach is to first take the view that they may show potential problems. If material costs are greater than expected, then it is important to determine whether material of the same quality could have been obtained more cheaply, or have all the suppliers raise their costs. If labor costs were greater than expected, then it is necessary to see if any new working practices are being in introduced, 
or whether there was a change in rate due to an agreement with the company, with the union, or a government change in wage rate, particularly where minimum wage is concerned. Managers will usually determine which variances to examine. Often only those that are seen as exceptional will be investigated further. These may be seen as exceptions because of dollar amount differences or because of the percentage variance from standard costs. This also means looking at favourable as well as unfavourable variance. If the materials variance seems very favourable, it might be that cheaper inferior quality material was purchased. This could lead to future problems. If there are customer complaints that arise from product failure, then business could be lost. Introducing a new working practice may mean that less labour is required per unit. But if the labour force is maintained at its original level, then that could be the cause of an unfavourable variance. In general, managers should only be held responsible for the variances that they can control. Whilst incentives to increase production are beneficial, it is also important to remember that in the production of a good that goes through several stages, the capacity of production may be determined by one of these stages. Building up partly finished goods inventory before this bottleneck simply produces an excessive work in progress inventory. This would be a waste of resources. This ends our podcast on standard costs and variance, brought to you by Parkbench Tutors and narrated by David Hopcroft. Thank you for watching and for listening. We wish you success in your studies. For more information about Parkbench Tutors, please visit parkbenchtutors.com.